open to arrival. Woman with arms outstretched. Memphis, Paul Graham. In the photograph, there is a white film we must pass through to get to the scene. The whiteness is unnatural. It's in the way. It prevents seeing. I am thinking about what it means for whiteness to prevent apprehension, to soften the edges of an image as in memory. The filter acts as a kind of cataract. Who is not seeing? Whose vision is blurred? There is a black woman at the center of things. The more one looks, the more the photographs framing causes one to focus on the woman who lives beyond or is it inside the whiteness. The photograph, titled Woman with Arms Outstretched, Memphis, asks us to look closely at what she is doing. The word outstretched seems an overstatement, an interesting one. Does she walk a dog? The dog is a bag. I can make out the handles. The grass in which she stands is not a destination. It is not nature. It is a liminal patch of urban planning between infrastructures. A necropastoral, to borrow a term from poet Joel McSweeney. The woman's arms seem slightly activated at her sides. Their movement is caught inside the stillness of the image. Does the photograph reflect the moment before the moment realized in the title? I am beginning to wonder if outstretched is a way of saying yearning. Yearning floods the whiteness without revealing whether it is a yearning for life or movement or sanity. The photograph captures an urban American landscape containing a black woman. Edited out of our seeing is how the photographer Paul Graham describes her. Woman with arms outstretched, Memphis, belongs to his series American Night. Maybe the yearning I attach to her is really that of the photographer. Perhaps then the white haze enacts his own struggle to see what the American landscape renders invisible. Graham says, you have to choose to overcome your own blindness. In Blind Spot, essayist and novelist Teju Cole recounts the disorienting experience of suffering from momentary blindness, a period of not seeing. He describes the temporary impairment. When I woke up, there was a gray veil right across my visual field of my left eye. The blindness wasn't total. I could see around the lace-like edges of the obstruction, and there was no pain. In his essay, Cole's blind spot is not only physiological. It is a metaphor for the ways in which the lens of white dominant spaces and communities often occludes the needs and bodies of people of color. The essay positions this disruption of sight as a looking backwards in time. Am I stumbling alone and almost blind down a quiet street in an unfamiliar town? The sun was as strong as an hallucination. The houses were brightly painted, crisp against the sky, making the whole street a collage, foggy in parts, clear in others, grainy in the distance so that all of a sudden I was no longer in the present at all, but back in the era of the earliest photographs. The view seemed on the perpetual verge of vanishing. Cole's claim that the view seemed on the perpetual verge of vanishing catapults me back into Paul Graham's photograph where his white film mimics the blankness of the white gaze when confronted with the black figure. By literalizing the not seeing, Graham forces us to squint into the politics of our own seeing. The look brings us 
to the edge of blindness, and the stillness of the moving figure returns us to the first photograph of a human. Degers' 1838 type captured a figure standing in the middle of Rue du Temple in Paris, his foot resting on a fountain, a boy. Though he's surrounded by people, none can be seen in the photograph because of the slow exposure time on the metal plate. Because they were in motion and he was not, he survives the exposure. He is made visible by his stillness against the landscape. I feel this too in Graham's image, which slows down the process of seeing for us in order that we may better see ourselves seeing. <laughs>